Oh, good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, depending on when it's fine. Just as I promised, this is installment five of what black folks had to say about black jobs and immigration. And, you know, I hope you've been enjoying the previous ones so far. And I'm just trying to share and open your eyes to some things that everything that we hear that said by a white person is not racist. It's the truth a lot of times. Did I say racism doesn't exist? You never heard me say that. But everything that comes out of a mouth of somebody white, especially if we don't like them, is not racist. Donald Trump's comment about black and Hispanic jobs was not racist. Okay? Put that in your pipe and smoke it. So, I'm gonna read something to you from a guy named John L. Waller Jr. And he wrote this in the year 1904, so 119 years ago, in a magazine called A Colored American Magazine. And he called it the evils of European immigration. And as I mentioned to you before on the, one of the previous videos, I think it was the one with W.E.B. Du Bois, on immigration and black jobs where I told you that every immigrant that comes to this country regardless of skin tone gets white labeled on their birth certificate if they're born here so just to let you know that but John Waller wrote in 1904 that coming into this nation as paupers who must work or starve they readily afford a means by which commercial institutions may obtain cheap labor thereby depriving native born Americans, let me repeat that, native born Americans of the opportunity to work which is justly theirs. The entrance of any considerable number of these immigrants into a community is generally a signal for reduction in wages. It matters little to corporations whether or not native Americans are thrown out of employment. Repeat that, it matters little to corporations whether or not Native Americans are thrown out of employment. All they desire is cheap labor and whether or not such labor is furnished by Americans or foreigners is a matter which gives them little concern. No one thing has been more favorable to the organization and growth of trust in the United States than the cheap labor furnished by European immigrants. Under conditions demanding a better price for uh, for toll, their rapid growth in so short, uh, short a period would have been impractical. By restricting immigration, by restricting immigration, placing labor at a staple price and giving preference to native sons, wherever there's work to do, the serious trouble to the government and the inconvenience to commerce which often result would soon decrease to the minimum. It may be argued that America contains abundant natural resources to sustain a largely increased population and that the entrance of European immigrants contribute to the development of the country. But it should be remembered that the days of pioneer immigrants have long since passed. They no longer go to the soil for their daily bread but flock to the already overcrowded cities and immediately proceed to deprive Native Americans of employment by offering themselves at cheap prices. Now, in 1905, in the Colored American Magazine, there's a, another article titled Immigration Again. And it was talking once again about the threat that immigration posed to blacks. And it reads, some months ago, the Colored American Magazine called attention to the forces that were influencing or making an effort to do so, Italian immigrants to the South, with the specific purpose of displacing with them the colored labor in the field and public work. During the last month, arrangements were begun to take place at New Orleans, a large immigration station, which shall be the center of this new thing, into which all of the immigrants that landed in New York shall be sent for distribution throughout the South. This scheme has the sanction, if not the active support, of Commissioner General 
of Immigration, Frank P. Sargent, who has expressed himself as well pleased not only with the selection of New Orleans as the base of operation, but with the idea of flooding the South with foreign labor as well. It is of no use to warn the South against inviting a foreign, disagreeable, and unfit element into its miss. This has been repeatedly done, and the South has repeatedly disregarded all warnings, however logical and convincing. It must learn, and it certainly shall, that Italians cannot do farm labor and will not for any length of time perform satisfactory public work. No less a person, Mr. Thomas H. Malone, who thoroughly understands conditions in the South, pointed out recently in a newspaper article that the Italian, as a laborer, is unreliable and ineffective, and he substantiated the charge with forceful citation of recent shortcoming. And yet, in this the South must take its lesson, for it is like unto a foolish maiden who accepts advice from no quarter, and oft times will not believe what her eyes behold. The friends of the race in the South should warn colored men everywhere against unreliability in labor, leaving the plantation, and failing to purchase the soil wherever and whenever they can. If cheap and foreign labor should take root, if cheap and foreign labor should take root and become well grounded in the South, the Afro American as a laborer skilled workman and soil owner would be in much the same condition as his brother in the north who cannot find work of a high character and consequently unable to purchase land consequently unable to purchase land and homes even if they were offered to him in desirable sections the colored man in the south should be in every energy to the making sure of his present domination as a labor informer and to acquire more of every kind of labor and land in sight. Those who are leading the South should impress these truths upon the frank and file, rank and file, in order that they might be prepared any attack made upon their economic life. So, are these black men saying anything different than Donald Trump just said? Or should I rephrase it and say, is Don did Donald Trump say something different than what these black men said over a hundred years ago? There's, in 1904, there's an article called The Bread and Butter Argument in the magazine, the Color of American magazine. The Afro-American people are beginning to face the industrial conditions which the writer forewarned them was coming. Their rights to make a living in the basic employments of society is being questioned on every hand. How many times have they questioned our viability in our work? Work it. How many times have we heard how lazy we are as people? But their rights to make a living in the basic employments of society is being questioned on every hand, and the number of such employments is being narrowed constantly. Narrowed constantly. The labor unions have done what they could to keep the race out of the employment and those not skilled in character which the unions control because related in some sort to the skilled trade such as coal mining, construction work, and the like. It is a remarkable and fatigable thing to go over the list of employments which the race enjoyed in New York City 20 years ago and are now no longer open to it except in isolated instances where individuals have come over as any other asset to the business or estate and whose places are filled by white persons as fast as they pass out to sea. This has been the case with bank messengers, janitors of office buildings, restaurant waiters, coachmen and domestic servants, and hotel employees. 20 years ago, Afro-Americans had practically a monopoly of the labor in all of these occupations. This was especially true of janitor, domestic, and hotel service. Gradually, black and colored peoples have been replaced by white Americans, well, not white Americans, white persons, Europeans, for the most part. As it has been seen in domestic and janitor service in New York, so also it has been in other occupations referred to in the beginning of this article, notably in hotel and restaurant service. 
The Negro head waiter has disappeared from the hotel service in New York City, and the waiters have gone with him. The loss of this occupation and that of domestic service has been a positive misfortune to the men and women of the race in New York. Indeed, the choice of occupation is steadily narrowed, so that it would be difficult to say now the large Afro-American population of the metropolis manages to keep soul and body together, especially when the high price of living, of which rent is the most considerable item, is taken into account. In a broader way, the statistics just furnished by the Federal Census Bureau show that there has been a steady falling off in the number of Negroes employed in the steel trade. White artisans of their own motion or by motion of the trade union are crowding them hard, if not out. And this is just a little quick sentence from uh, the New York Age back in the year 1917. Say the action of Congress is enacting an immigration bill is of particular interest to the colored people of this country. The return of thousands of foreigners to their home of their birth incident to the European war materially helped to create new industrial opportunities for Negro labor. Immediately after the water influx of immigrants to America is not likely to be large, but there will be plenty of work to be done abroad. Many inclined to come to this country will be discouraged by the literacy test. So all these years they've been saying black folks was done. But this 1917, this was still over 100 years ago, and it said most of the European immigrants didn't want to come here because they could not pass the literacy test. You know, they used to say black people were just dumb and, you know, white men were so superior. And then when it came to find out that white men had between, all of them had between 1 and 3% Neanderthal blood, because they used to say blacks were like Neanderthals, because, you know, Neanderthals ought to be like cave-in, uneducated, you know, not able to communicate, none of that other stuff. And so they said black people were like that. And then in the 1990s, they did a study and found out that White men, all white men had between 1 and 3% Neanderthal blood in their system, and black men had zero Neanderthal blood in their system. Then they changed up and said, well, Neanderthals had to be very smart then. But we close with this, this phrase here, this sentence from this same piece in 1917. Negro labor is coming into its own in America. The race, we believe, is aware of the greatest industrial opportunities open to it since the Civil War. The race should also be prepared by efficiency to meet this new condition. So, the Donald Trump phrase on black jobs and Hispanic jobs being threatened by illegal immigrants differ in any way from these uh, speeches I've been sharing with you in this series. Talk to you later.